From the Selfish Path to Romance, download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. But this girl's like, you know, beautiful. She's smart. She's fun. It's different from most of the girls I've been with. So call her up, Romeo. Why? So I can realize she's not that smart. You know, I mean, you don't, this girl's like perfect right now. I don't want to ruin that. Maybe you're perfect right now. Maybe you don't want to ruin that. But I think that's a super philosophy, Will. That way you can go through your entire life without ever having to really know anybody. And that's from Good Will Hunting. And many people keep others at arm's length because if you let them get too close, you are afraid that they'll see your bumps and warts and the things that you don't like about yourself. And so sometimes we say, well, you know, they're too perfect or they'll really, if they really got to know me, they'll see my imperfections. And you, you keep people at arm's length. Um, so you don't want to do that in your life. You want to be able to look at your own imperfections and fix them. And with that in mind, here's a situation where a person is doing just that. She's trying to figure out what's gr- going on screwy in her life, especially in the work situation. And we've all been in situations where there's been a click and we can't penetrate it. We're on the outside. And they people just roll their eyes at you and don't like you. And you just, it's an awful feeling. So here's Corrine's question. Here's her situation and then her question. Dr. Kenner, I am struggling to understand why people at work do not like me. I started a new job a year ago and I was excited to meet new people. I'm friendly and initiate conversation with my coworkers, but my efforts are not well received. I seem to subconsciously turn people off and I find myself repeatedly excluded. When new people join the company, they are walked around and introduced to everyone but me. I have no idea what's going on, but I continue to put up a confident front even though I am in an internal wreck. I have become fed up to the point that I'm looking for a new job. I was at a previous job for nine years, and I had a similar problem with my co-workers, but not to this degree. My fear is not the workplace. It, excuse me. My fear is not that it is the workplace. It is me. The problem has left me feeling depressed, confused, and alone. Sincerely, Con- Corrine. Cor- oh, this is Corrine, sorry. Corrine, when I was in fifth grade, I was the shyer kid in a very popular group. I was in the clique. I was in the group. And I loved the group leader. She was charismatic. She was adventurous. She was funny. And she could be very cutting, very sarcastic at times. So not only did I love her and admire her, but I was terrified of her. We were friends. She just lived a few doors down from me, and we were in the same classrooms. This is grade school I'm talking about now. Uh, Only it didn't feel like like a mutual friendship. It felt like I was in a one-down position, and I kept myself there. I was shy. I didn't have the self-confidence to speak up for myself. Then I recall walking into the schoolyard one morning, and some of my friends refused to play with me. They told me, and I'll give her a name, that Sheila gave them a choice. This popular girl gave them a choice. They could be friends with her or with me, not both. Now, let me tell you, I'd prefer to be friends with her than with the me back then. I was real shy. They told me that Sheila, that, um, that that was the choice that she gave them, and they were sorry they couldn't speak with me anymore. Now, this was extremely baffling to me. I didn't know why I was shunned, and this lasted a few days until a teacher find out, found out about it, and she called all the girls in and told them they can't keep ostracizing me, that, that they can never do that. They got, I guess, pretty much uh, put in their place, and they stopped doing that. Um, but I think it set me up to be more tentative in groups throughout my life. Now, you're in a similar spot. You reach out in a friendly manner, and you're repeatedly ignored, and it happens on two jobs, not just one job. Now, the question is, is it them or me? That's the very painful question. And how do you go about answering it? Well, there are many times when it is them, not you. For an example, an excellent teacher, very dedicated to her job and very creative, 
meets up with or gets involved with a school that is more of the don't rock the boat. You know, we want all our vacations and more, and we want to get the kids out of here. We want to get them out of our hair. So she may be shunned because she doesn't fit the mold of the don't rock the boat type teachers. In this case, she shouldn't go chasing after them. She should recognize that she's in the right. She's got much better standards than they do. She should take pride in herself and never appease people who are envious or lazy. But let's assume in your case, Corrine, that this is not the situation, that there is something that you're doing that's off-putting. Well, the best way is to address this is to gather facts and to face them openly. I went to a five-day intensive workshop with 10 business leaders from around the country, about 10 of them. And at the end of the week, after living with each other for five days, we gave each other very clean feedback. It wasn't dressed up or sugar-coated. And I learned some stuff about myself that I've always known implicitly, but it was really good. It, well, this wasn't good stuff about myself uh, that that has helped me out. So there are also a lot of things that they liked about me. So the first question you ask yourself is, what do you like about you? What is friendly about you? If they only knew the good in you, what would they find? I would sit down with a paper and pencil and write everything you like about yourself down. And then you want to say, what do I know about myself that might be off-putting? You do the good first. Do I act nervous when I'm in a group? Get very specific here. Do I talk too much? Too little? Am I real timid? Do I stink? Do I have BO? Is it something very fixable like that? Do I interrupt people? Do I talk about trivia and too much of it? Do I talk too much about myself? Do I give advice too readily? Do I share too much personal information too quickly? Do I dress in a slovenly manner? Am I overweight or gawky in some way that's changeable? Do I try to please others too much? So see if you can identify a couple of attributes or habits that you have that may set you up for this awkwardness, for some off-putting behavior. Then... Get information from those you trust. If you have a good friend or a family member, ask them, what do you notice about me? Now, initially, they'll say, oh, nothing, you're wonderful. But say, no, can you level with me? Is there something I do that you think might be off-putting to people? You have to be ready to accept their feedback and thank them for it. That's what we were trained to do in that workshop. We thank the people for giving us negative feedback because you can't change unless you learn what you're doing wrong. You can also give yourself the benefit of therapy. You can get some self-help. There's a book, The Loneliness Book, A Guide to Developing and Maintaining Lasting Connections by Mary Ellen Copeland. Uh, it's a mixed book, but there's some really good stuff in that. Now, notice with all of this, your goal is not to become a people pleaser, the life of the party, or an accepted member of of your coworkers click. Your goal is to learn to make personal changes so that you admire yourself more, you make yourself more lovable, and you you get the first benefit. You like yourself more. Then when you go to reach out to people, realize it's not a group versus you. Each person is an individual in that group. So reach out to the friendliest person in that group and try to befriend them. And Or you can even ask them for feedback. But don't come in too wimpy because that's off-putting to people. You can level with them. Just say, I'm puzzled. Help me understand what's going on here. Is there something behind the scenes I'm not getting? You can ask a question like that to somebody who's more friendly. And when you, notice, when you start to build a little more self-confidence, and maybe even if you don't have personal interest to develop more of those, you'll find it easier to reach out. If you have a hobby, it's easier to reach people. And you won't fear rejection because fundamentally, you're not rejecting yourself. You like yourself or you love yourself. So I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. You're listening to The Rational Basis of Happiness. And we didn't get to the email of the woman who's the man in the house. So I promise, I promise you that we will get to this uh, question next time. And coming up, we'll be talking about those situations in which you feel you're dealing with someone who drags their feet, who does just the minimum. 
they are lazy, you ask your husband to clean the, the, or he agrees to clean the barn or the garage, and he just does one corner of it and just basically says, I cleaned it, and he didn't. Or you're working with somebody, and you feel a co-worker, and you feel like you're pulling all the weight, but your co-worker is ready to share all the credit with you. Well, coming up, we are going to be talking about this situation in the classroom. What if you're a teacher, and you have students who just want to do the minimum just to squeak by. Now, I admit that I have done that in some classes and in others I've put forth my all and above that, above and beyond that. But what if, what does that say about any of us in those moments when we just blow it off? We just want to do the minimum. Coming up, we'll be talking, I'll be talking with Dr. John Lewis, who will tell you about how to how to not drag your feet in your own life and make the most of your work career. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path of Romance by psychologist Dr. Kenner and Locke. It is very important to communicate constantly, even on difficult topics such as thoughts of flirting or worse. Some benefits of such open communication are, it promotes honesty and integrity. You are not attempting to live a double life. You are not faking an attraction to your partner while secretly fantasizing about having an affair with Sherry or Jay. It enhances trust and communicates how much you value your partner. Boy, if she could share that with me, I can really trust her. She must really value me more than Jay. It helps you and your partner communicate about the possible reasons for an extramarital attraction and thus allows you to address a problem. I want us to spend more time together. It bothers me to see you drinking every night. I miss the way you used to look and dress. You were so sexy. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com. <laughs> 